Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's demonstration is all about security, from the account level and granting users access, uh, all the way down to an individual remote control session. In today's day and age, the idea of accessing uh, anything remotely via the internet can be a scary prospect. Uh, luckily, one of LogMeIn's highest priorities is maintaining a secure method for you and your users to access all the benefits of Central. While I won't be getting too far into the technical details, I have included a link to the Log Me In Security white paper below, we're going to look at some of the ways you can add additional security to your account. Let's talk about some of the defaults to start. Every Log Me In account requires an active email to govern the account, known as a Master Account Holder, or MAH, email. The Master Account is the ultimate administrative account, where users and computers are first invited. As you may recall from other user videos, the master account holder can invite other administrators to access and set all policies on the account, aside from the billing section. This is the only facet of Central that can only be accessed by the MAH. From a security perspective, it is best to maintain a master account email inbox that can only be accessed by administrators and that remains in good standing. Remember, for all intents and purposes, the master account holder is considered the owner of the account. Any user, including the master account holder, must enter their LogMeIn ID and password when accessing the account online. This is the most basic security Central offers, so please be sure to create a strong password. Once the user is logged into Central, they are operating behind a 256-bit AES encryption for the duration of their session. Additional security prompts may appear depending on where the user navigates and what access was granted to them in their user invitation. By default, any user who wishes to remote control, file transfer, or establish a background access session with a host computer must also know the credentials for the host as if they were sitting in front of it. A user of LogMeIn may or may not be permitted to save credentials for future use so that they don't need to enter them every time they start a remote session. This permission would be granted or revoked in the Manage Users section. Remote control sessions will also time out in one hour if there is no activity on the session. This is the most basic and defaulted security features in Central, but we highly recommend you add additional security features to keep your account safe. Let's discuss starting with how users log into Central. We're going to navigate to our User tab on the left-hand menu and select Login Policy. Here we can select one or several additional security features that are instantly applied to all users of the account. Yes, even the master account holder. Password Strength You can mandate a policy that users must have a strong password if they are to use Central. A strong password as defined on this page is 7 characters or more, contains capital letters, lowercase letters, and numbers, changed every 90 days, and different from the LogMeIn ID and previous four passwords. Two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is the most common additional security feature used within Central, and in many cases is required for users and companies to be in compliance with certain government standards. Two-factor authentication appears after a user has successfully entered their password and requires the user to validate their identity by authenticating with a code or phone application. The authentication message is sent to a pre-configured email account or mobile device, allowing for easy retrieval, as the name suggests, providing a second authentication factor before a user can log in. Two-factor authentication is user-specific, and when applied, prompts a user to enter the details of their mobile device at next login. All methods of receiving the authentication message are entered and confirmed and then required moving forward. Timeout. This changes the default logout time from one hour to 15 minutes when the account is idle. If you wish to implement additional security on your own account, but don't want to force the policies on other users, you can configure all of these capabilities in the Settings menu, located in Account Settings and Security. Additional security settings that can be configured for personal use or en masse. 
a one-time use emailed security code sent to an email of your choosing. Please note, this is separate from two-factor authentication and therefore could be in addition to two-factor authentication. A list of printed security codes that each expire after one use. Be careful when selecting this option, as there is no way to disable this if the code sheet is ever lost. A policy which prevents users from saving the credentials when starting a remote control session with a host. A list of user-related actions that can trigger an email notification when carried out. Additional email notifications can be selected in the Account Audit section of Account Settings. So far, all of the security measures we've discussed have been directly related to a user's login capabilities. But what about after the user has logged in? We can add additional security to the remote control connection process using a combination of Log Me In Control Panel settings and host preference packages. If you're not familiar with these, don't worry. They're covered in detail in another video. Capabilities include additional computer-specific passwords, remote connection timeout settings, policies for lost, closed, or failed connections, and subsequent lockouts. In fact, just about everything within Central, from reporting and alerts to proper user management, is designed to promote a successful and secure experience for all users within Central. So where do we go from here? Well, just about every training video in this channel will discuss security as it relates to the topic at hand. In particular, however, I recommend watching videos on user management, published February 2018, and host preference packages, published late March 2018. These will provide the best examples of additional security available for your computers. And that ends our video on security. As you can see, we've only scratched the surface but I hope this helps in configuring some of the most commonly sought after security features within Central. Thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe to this channel for future videos on Central Best Practices.